the Spined Lizard, Prince of the Rivers and one of the largest theropods to have ever walked the planet. The Spinosaurus is one of the most famous theropods to have ever existed, one of the few that gets often thrown into the ring with Tyrannosaurus Rex. But what if instead we threw this titan of prehistory into our modern day, specifically within modern day Africa? Is it built to last or will it face a quick extinction? As always, we cover the big three areas of analysis, this being environmental suitability, diet, and resistance to threats and competition. These areas will all be scored out of 10 before being summed up for an ultimate survival score. As always, if you enjoyed these videos, then make sure to like and subscribe and let us get started. The rivers and floodplains of Cretaceous North Africa were once ruled by Spinosaurus aegypticus, one of the largest and most distinctive theropods to have ever existed. Measuring around 14 meters or 45 feet in length, 2.4 meters or 7.8 feet at the hip, potentially reaching 5 meters or 16 feet at the top of its sail. It was also a bulky predator, with estimated weights putting it at around 7 to 8 tons. It is noted for its elongated skull, crocodile-like jaws, and most famously, the towering sail-like structure along its back. The function of that sail remains debated. It may have been utilized for display or thermoregulation, but its presence made Spinosaurus instantly recognizable among all other predators. The thing with this absolute giant is that its mobility is suspected to be rather poor. I mean, on land, it seems more likely that Spinosaurus was a slow mover. Its leg proportions, large sail, and long paddle-like tail would have hindered its maximum speed. It was certainly slower than other theropods its own size. While I cannot say its exact speed, I wouldn't be surprised if it was less than 20 kilometers an hour or 12 miles per hour. I mean, Serena's 2024 study pointed it to being a slow moving biped, meaning it was not all that fast nor agile. Now, when it comes to its swimming ability, well, that is the million dollar question, isn't it? We had poor Serena on the side of Spinosaurus not being all that developed for swimming, while others such as Ibrahim might argue otherwise. For the sake of this video and for Spinosaurus, I will have the Spinosaurus being capable of swimming. However, it was nowhere near to the level of crocodilians with it spending much of its time stalking prey in the shallower ends. Its bite force is also a feature that often gets underrated, mainly because it gets compared to the powerhouses such as Tyrannosaurus rex and Giganotosaurus. According to Sakamoto's study, estimates place its anterior bite force at roughly 4,829 newtons and its posterior bite force at around 11,936 newtons. This was sufficient for gripping slippery prey such as large fish, as well as taking down decently sized dinosaurs. Its long conical teeth were not serrated, but instead well adapted for puncturing and holding, suggesting a feeding strategy specialized for aquatic hunting. As for intelligence, while well, Spinosaurus likely possessed cognitive abilities comparable to that of other large theropods. Studies on its relatives such as Baryonyx and Irritator reveal brain structures typical of carnivorous dinosaurs, functional but not exceptionally advanced. Evidence indicates that Irritator had enlarged flocular lobes, aiding in eye stabilization, an adaptation that would be beneficial for tracking fast-moving objects in the water. Similarly, its olfactory bulbs were comparable in size to other theropods, suggesting that Spinosaurus may have retained a decent sense of smell despite its aquatic habits. In terms of diet, whale Spinosaurus is of course hypothesized to have primarily targeted large fish some potentially weighing close to a ton. However, it was likely opportunistic with small herbivores and even other carnivores not having off the menu when the opportunity arose. There has even been a discovered Spinosaurus tooth being embedded in a pterosaur vertebrae, further reinforcing its opportunistic nature. It also shared its ecosystem with other apex predators like Caracodontosaurus. And while direct competition may have been limited due to the different hunting niches, territorial disputes or confrontation over resources when limited were almost certainly a part of its life. These encounters along with potential intraspecific conflict with other Spinosaurus individuals, as well as sauropods, would have given it experience in facing large, formidable opponents. Unlike its cinematic depictions, the real Spinosaurus was not an unstoppable land-based super predator that could destroy anything in its path. Rather, it was quite a specialized semi-aquatic hunter that dominated aquatic ecosystems. I would argue the true Spinosaurus was far more fascinating and interesting, holding many mysteries that we still need to uncover. So with all that being established, it is now time to figure out how it would perform in the modern day. If the Spinosaurus were to be placed in modern day Africa, it would find a continent that is both familiar and foreign. In terms of temperature, the transition would not be especially harsh. The Cretaceous world that it inhabited was warm, averaging around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit, comparable to some of the climates of modern day Africa. Although during temperature extremes, much of Africa has the potential to exceed well over 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. 
From a thermal standpoint, Spinosaurus could likely tolerate modern conditions quite well. However, extremes would certainly pose a problem. Another issue is that the broader landscape is very well a different challenge. Where Cretaceous North Africa was once dominated by vast river systems, sprawling floodplains and humid wetlands, much of Africa's region has become arid or semi-arid. The Sahara now is a brutal terrain for something like Spinosaurus. Suitable environments for such a large semi-aquatic predator would need to include somewhat stable water sources, especially during dry seasons. Much of these regions would resemble fragments of its ancient habitat, but they are far smaller in scale and often separated by vast distances of inhospitable terrain. Given this, the Spinosaurus would likely find patches of comfort in certain rivers but would struggle to maintain viable territory across fragmented habitats. While the temperature would push against its tolerance, the real kicker would be the lack of continuous wetland systems that would restrict its range severely. The Spino receives an environmental suitability score of 6.5 out of 10. As for prey, well, there are many options available. But in saying that, when you have one of the largest theropods walking around in a modern ecosystem, you already know that it's going to require a lot of food to keep going. The Nile perch would likely be one of the Spinosaurus's primary targets. Found throughout the Nile and several large water areas, this fish can reach lengths of 2 meters or 6.5 feet and weigh up to 200 kilograms or 440 pounds. While smaller than the fish the Spinosaurus was used to, these would still be sizable and energy-rich meals. In deeper or larger bodies of water, the Spinosaurus may also encounter the Goliath tigerfish, a large fish that could grow up to 50 kilograms or 110 pounds in weight. Crocodiles would also present potential, though more risky prey. The Nile crocodile could potentially reach 5 meters or 16 feet in length and weights exceeding 800 kilograms or 1,763 pounds. While mature individuals would be dangerous prey options for young Spinosaurs, the adult size difference would be just too significant and they would make a nice prey option. Moving beyond reptiles and fish, large fish-eating birds and mammals that frequent Africa's waterways may also attract the spiner's attention. The shoebill stork, weighing around 5 to 7 kilograms or 11 to 15 pounds, could be snatched by a young spino from time to time, being the equivalent of a pterosaur. Now, of course, there are your classic zebras and wildebeests, which roam the savannas, both sizable creatures for today's standards. However, despite being easy prey to theoretically take down, the spinosaurus would have to catch it first. This brings up its biggest issue, speed. As we covered, Spinosaurus' proportions likely limited its top speeds. Thus, this positions it to take down larger prey. This brings in the African buffalo, which acts as another potential prey option. This herbivore on its heavier ends could weigh up to 870 kilograms or 1,918 pounds. Now, this prey option would still be quite fast and agile in comparison to what the Spinosaurus would be used to. Instead, the Spinosaurus would likely find success ambushing a large herd of these buffaloes around a water source, where panic would give the Spinosaurus the opportunity to take down a few. Even larger semi-aquatic mammals like the hippopotamus, which can weigh over 3,200 kilograms or 7,000 pounds and possess a bite force of 8,100 newtons, would pose a greater challenge. This of course would be a result of their aggressive nature, which would lead to young Spinosaurus often being taken out when looking for other water sources. An adult Spinosaurus was over twice its size and held a much meaner bite force. At best, the hippo would have to run, otherwise it would end up as lunch. Rhinos could also be potential prey options, although they would be far more potent. Their 50-inch horns could do some serious damage if piercing a vulnerable area. But again, as the rhino's heaviest weight is around half that of a Spinosaur, I think that they are severely outmuscled. Giraffes, on the other hand, would be a decent source of food while also being not too dangerous. They are large but not too heavy, being only around a ton in weight. The only issue being a giraffe is so tall that it could spot a Spino from a mile away, giving them the opportunity to escape. And of course, we have to wrap up the diet section with the most dangerous prey option around. This comes in the form of the African elephant. This absolute giant actually rival the Spinosaur when it comes to pure size. Typically, these elephants reach around 6 meters or 20 feet in length and 3.3 meters or 10.8 feet tall and 6 tons in weight. However, the absolute largest bull elephants can weigh in at over 10 tons. This giant mammal can even exceed the weights that the Spinosaurus is estimated to reach. That added with the speed of 40 kilometers an hour or 25 miles per hour and power that allows them to uproot trees and flip over cars makes them a mammal best to avoid. And of course, for the Spinosaurus, scavenging would be of no issue. Overall, the Spinosaurus would find enough food to survive, but not necessarily easily. While its hunting tools match Africa's aquatic fauna well, prey size, abundance, and environmental variability would limit how efficiently it could sustain itself. It could dominate in the water, but scarcity along with its lack of speed would keep it from its diet being fully reliable. So with this, I believe that the Spinosaurus would receive a dietary score of 6.5 out of 10.
Within an ecosystem of modern day Africa, Spinosaurus would stand out as an apex predator, but even apex predators face rivals and competition. While few living animals could challenge it outright in size or strength, several formidable species could compete with it or occasionally threaten its dominance. The most direct ecological competitor would likely be the Nile crocodile. Although it does serve as a potential prey option for a full grown Spinosaurus, this species also represented a key rival. Nile crocodiles dominate many of Africa's waterways, capable of preying on large fish, antelope, and even on the occasional buffalo. They would hold considerable control over aquatic territories. A territorial Spinosaur would likely work to exclude crocodile groups from its hunting territory, utilizing intimidation and physical displays to secure the best fishing grounds. Also, with the Nile crocodile possessing such a strong bite force, young Spinosaurs would be extremely vulnerable to predation, meaning that the parents would have to look out for them. On land, however, Spinosaurus' supremacy would somewhat wane. Its slow, sprawling walk and aquatic special Specialization would make it poorly suited for dominant in dry habitats. Terrestrial carnivores such as lions, hyenas, and African leopards would of course not pose a direct threat to an adult Spinosaur, but they would compete indirectly by targeting overlapping prey sources. As great of a hunter that the Spinosaurus was likely, it was simply not built to hunt modern day fauna, leading to it being a worse off predator when thrown into this ecosystem. Instead, it would likely find great success in scavenging off of the prey that modern predators take down. If a pride of lions spent their energy taking down a buffalo, they would certainly not challenge a young 4-ton spino, let alone an 8-ton adult. Leopards would likely hold the greatest success in repelling having its prey stolen through bringing them up into a tall tree. However, as with the Nile crocodiles, juveniles would be extremely vulnerable to these faster predators, which could pick them off with relative ease. By its dominance in individual encounters, Spinosaurus would exist in a delicate balance with its surroundings. Aggressive crocodiles would remain constant competitors, and extended dry seasons could force dangerous travels in search of stable habitats. In such a competitive and unpredictable world, even a giant like Spinosaurus would not be untouchable. I would argue when it comes to resistance to threats and competition, the Spinosaurus would still score an 8 out of 10. It really only loses out on points because it is not completely suited for terrestrial or aquatic life, so it could be competed in both sectors as well as being extremely vulnerable when growing up. So with that being all said and done, it is time to get into the ultimate survival scenario. If you enjoyed so far, make sure to like and subscribe. Well, if we drop populations of Spinosaurus across Africa, well, a lot could and would happen. First things first on a Spinosaurus to do this. This would be to establish a territory. Given its immense size and imposing presence, this would not be particularly difficult. Large river systems would likely become prime real estate. A dominant or even a few dominant individuals could easily claim several kilometers of riverbank, using its size and aggression to deter any large predators or competitors. Smaller populations may also settle around deltas or swamps, taking advantage of the abundant water and fish populations. Once established, the Spinosaurus would adapt quickly to its new environment. Despite the differences in its terrain from the Cretaceous, its physiology would make it well suited for life around modern Africa waterways. Its dense bones would help it swim across water with its long tail providing the propulsions to swim across deeper sections, although they aren't going to be star divers. In terms of hunting behavior, Spinosaurus would likely adopt an ambush strategy. It could remain motionless over the surface, waiting for large fish or crocodiles to come within reach before striking with its long jaws. In shallow waters, it might walk across riverbeds using sensory receptors on its snout to detect movement, similar to how modern crocodiles detect vibration. Its conical teeth would make short work of slippery prey, while its sheer strength could allow it to overpower smaller aquatic predators with ease. I mean, what a sight it would be to see a one-ton crocodile being lifted out of the water by a fully grown spino. However, relatively small aquatic prey could only feed populations for so long. Spinos would fill a portion of their diet purely off of scavenging. Not lions, nor hyenas, nor leopard, nor cheetah, nor wild dog, nor anything else for the matter, could protect their successful hunts from this theropod. Any carnivore bold enough to stand up to this giant would be swiftly swatted away like a fly. Hippos, of course, would present a form of territorial conflict, but while they are aggressive and capable of defending themselves against modern threats, the Spinosaurus' greater size and aquatic ability would allow it to dominate when needed. I mean, it has been observed many times over that hippos will actively avoid and move away from approaching elephants, and when they don't, it never ends well for them. I I believe the same would apply here. However, you might argue that the spino would rather them around as they would act as potential food options. Over the first few months within these ecosystems, the Spinosaurus would fulfill itself by taking down fish, reptiles, and the medium-sized mammals that called this place home. Young spinos would likely be taken down by adult crocodiles, hippos, and even rhinos, whether due to territorial conflict or failed hunts. However, eventually, this newly introduced prehistoric species would realize it wasn't entirely the top dog. Its real test would arrive in the form of the African bush elephant. 
elephant. Herds of these giants would be unlike anything the Spinosaurus had ever seen. Strange appendages, tusks and loud noises. But the Spinosaurus itself would present the unknown. Never had an elephant seen a predator larger than itself. When conflict would occur between these two, no matter the aggressor, would result in an interesting interaction. Smaller or isolated individuals, especially the sick or young, might pique the interest of a Spinosaurus, particularly if they wanted near a waterway. However, challenging a herd or challenging a full-grown 10-ton bull elephant would be a grave mistake. The sheer size, strength and speed of an African elephant could end up overwhelming the Spinosaurus whose build was more suited for the aquatic realm. I mean, I would understand if people would argue otherwise, but I think a fully grown 10-ton elephant would be more than capable of defending itself and even defeating an adult Spinosaurus, mainly a result of its mass and charging speed. Over time though, the Spinosaurus would learn to respect the elephant's dominance on land, keeping its distance and only hunting them if desperate or if a sick individual became available. If population stabilized, the Spinosaurus might even become a keystone species. Its hunting would keep large fish populations in balance and its movements shaping river ecosystems. However, its success would depend heavily on water availability and prey density. In times of drought or reduced river flows, Spinosaurus would be forced to travel great distances to find suitable habitats, and smaller or weaker individuals may not survive this transition. Hatchling or young Spinosaurus would be a constant risk from being taken out by just about every single creature that roamed Africa. Lizards would invade nests, crocs would snap them from the water, lions and other predatory mammals would eliminate them to reduce competition, and rhinos, elephants and hippos would take their pick. Spinosaur parents would likely have to be extra vigilant at this stage in life, as although dinosaurs were used to mammals raiding nests, this would be an entirely different ballpark. In essence, the Spinosaurus could carve out a solid niche within modern day Africa, especially in the wetter regions. Its specialized anatomy would still serve it well in a world of rivers and floodplains, but its dominance could come at a cost. It would be bound to the water, thriving where land meets the river. Outside of that, it would be pressed to scavenge or risk hunting more dangerous prey options. The Spinosaurus owns an ultimate survival score of 21 out of 30. It would be able to survive in this ecosystem, however, it would not be living perfectly. Fluctuations of seasons along with a big appetite would not be a good combo. Still, it would dominate anything that was not an elephant, and thus, I believe that the Spinosaurus could survive in modern day Africa. And now we've reached the end of the video, and I hope you've all enjoyed. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, comment down below what you'd like to see next, and I'll catch you on the next video. See ya, mates.